Oh, I need to turn it up. How about now? Is it working? Okay, wonderful news. Yes. I, um, you know, speaking of Nico there, as I was walking the laps around, I feel a breeze and I turn and he'll tell you, I'd say, I said, wow, what it must be like to be 50 years younger than I am now or something like that. So kudos, you did good. Um, I'll keep this brief this morning. Remember to go out, since we're talking about the walkathon in Camp Cianito, remember to go out to the announcement slides that Patty puts out. It's also in the bulletins as well. And you can see the camp dates and what the uh, what grade requirements are for each one. And when all of the camps are available at Cianito. So please go out and do that. Uh, the next Crafty Ladies is on Tuesday, May 24th at 10 a.m. at Lila's house. And the theology class and the scripture class are still on Tuesdays, but effective this Tuesday, they will start at 6.30 p.m. 6.30 p.m. So please make a note of that and uh and join all the technicians are aware of that and uh uh wayne since he lives in florida different time zone he requested the time change and and uh, the scripture class said yeah we don't want to make it more difficult on the technicians and we all agreed that 6 30 is the is the time to make it easier for all uh, remember to go to all of these things, go to www.cfchristsa.org. I'm even doing it faster now, Lila. Did you notice that? I got it down. And, uh, and you can join the service like we are today and uh, all the classes. And also the youth class is still available at still seven on Wednesdays. So same connection. So please, please do that. Um, you're getting a double dose of me today. I am doing the uh, good news and the prayer concerns. So if you would bow with me, I would like to lift those folks that have been identified to us in prayer. Our dear, kind, gracious Heavenly Father, we're here today to lift up concerns that have been brought to our attention. And Lord, they all need you. And Lord, we ask that uh, you'll place them in your hands and uh, hold them tight to you and help them through the concerns that they have in their lives presently. Ask that you lift up uh, Eric H. Uh, he's in the hospital ICU. Um, this is kind of a prayer concern and a grateful news concern at the same time, Lord, but uh, he's in ICU. He uh, was on a ventilator. Uh, he's suffering. He don't, they don't know how his kidneys are working. Um, congestive heart failure, possibly. But the good news is, Lord, you've already, it seems like you've already been with him. Uh, he's off the ventilator now. And he is on oxygen. And what I hear is that uh, uh, he'll be on oxygen until his lungs can operate on their own. And then they'll be able to do the test on his kidney and heart to see uh, what the needs are that, that he needs in his life to overcome this. Lord, I also lift up Jonathan C for health concerns. He's a pastor in a Houston congregation and uh, he fell and broke his arm in three places. His hip needs a repair. He's got bumps on his thyroid. Um, he has a lot of concerns, Lord. And we ask that you watch over him and help him through all those concerns that he has. Also, Manessa, father, passed away. And we ask that you will be with... Uh, all the family members that are going through this mourning period of uh, losing Manessa's father. Lord, we ask that you bless them all and keep them in your hands. 
And uh, Lord, I want to thank you. We've all known that uh, uh, Donna has been in rehab for a long time now, but Monday she is able to go home. And we praise you, Lord, for allowing her recovery to go as it has, and that she is able to go home to her own environment. So Lord, thank you for being who you are. And uh, we praise you. And in your son, Jesus Christ's name, our savior, amen. And now I will turn it over to our presider for the day. Good morning. I'd like to welcome you to the 11 o'clock Shenandoah service, both here in the congregation and online. Our theme this morning is love one another. Can we do it? So there's a question there. <laughs> I'd like to thank Ralph for greeting us at the door this morning. The Shannon family will help us with the call to worship. And just to let you know that Liam and Alana took care of the artwork for that as well. So we're in for a, a treat. Aaliyah will help us with the prayer for peace, Nico with the scripture reading, Earl will provide our message, and Carol Burdick will give us our disciples' generous response. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command. Mountains and, and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his faithful. For the people of Israel who are close to him, praise the Lord. Now, please join us in singing our hymn of praise, number 107, led by the Cole family. If you're in the sanctuary, please remember to wear your masks. If you'll stand, please.
after our prayer of praise, we'll have a response. It's number 642, praise the Lord together singing. So we can be prepared for that. If you'll join me in prayer. Our most kind and gracious heavenly parent, we come to you today to give you thanks and praise for all the many gifts that you have given to each of us. The ability to gather here in person or via Zoom to learn from each other more about you and your love for each of us as we continue on our life's journey with you in our hearts. In your son's most holy name we pray, amen. If everyone could take a deep breath in and exhale. Our scripture medica meditation comes from Doctrine and Covenants 164, verse 5. It is imperative to understand that when you are truly baptized into Christ, you become part of a new creation. By taking on life and by taking on the life and mind of Christ, you increasingly value ourselves and others from a changed perspective. Former ways of defining people by eco economic status, social class, sex, gender or ethnicity no longer a primary. Through the gospel of Christ, a new community of tolerance, reconciliation, unity and diversity, and love is being born as a visible sign of the coming reign of God. I'm gonna read that one more time. <clears throat> it is imperative to understand that when we are truly baptized into Christ, you become a part of a new creation. By taking on the life and mind of Christ, you increasingly view yourselves and others from a changed perspective. Former ways of defining people by economic status, sex, social class, sex, gender, or ethnicity are no longer a primary. Through the gospel, of Christ, a new community of tolerance, reconciliation, unity and diversity, and love is being born as a visible sign of the coming reign of God. God of all the earth and all the earth's people, move in us to pray for peace. May the spirit of reconciliation like floodwaters fill the places of political power. May the healing waters of God's love baptize the hearts of warring people. May God use us to shatter walls of fear and prejudice. May we build rather than destroy. Let God be our source of strength rather than relying on arms. May we arm ourselves with confidence in God's creative power to move us from tear to trust. May we be God's peacemakers, we pray in Jesus' name, amen.
Please join in our hymn of peace. We are people of God's peace, hymn number 306. Please remember to mask up. After washing their feet, he put on his robe again and sat down and asked, Do you understand what I was doing? You call me Master and Lord, and you do well to say it, for it is true. And since I, the Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash each other's feet. I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. Dear, dear children, how brief are these moments before I must go away and leave you. Then. Though you search for me, you cannot come to me, just as I told the Jewish leaders. And so I am giving a new commandment to you now. Love each other just as much as I love you. Your lo strong love for each other will prove to the world that you are my disciples. Let us sing hymn uh, 573 in Communi Community of Christ Sings, Into My Heart. Good morning to all of you here in the congregation and all of you joining us out on Zoom today. It's a beautiful day. I spent the morning sitting out on our back porch, as I often do. If you don't believe me, just ask Velma. I'm out there all the time. And I love watching the birds and the squirrels and all the flowers, the handiwork of my, my sister Yolanda. And it was an easy place to uh, contemplate for me uh, to what I want to speak to you today about. And our theme today is love one another. Easy, right? Huh? Uh, we'll, we'll address that. The question after that is, 
can we do it? And we're going to address that as well. There was a song that was made famous back in 1965 by Jackie DeShannon. And the name of the song is all, you know, what the world needs now. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. Anybody remember that? Well, I profess that in the day's time, and I'm sure it was true back then too, is that what the world needs now is God's sweet love. I'm not so sure as I watch the TV and read the news reports and so on that uh, that is a that that is a, a predominant theme. I don't believe it is. It is for a big part of us, particularly those here joining us on Zoom and uh, here in the sanctuary. But the world of, as a whole, I believe, could use a lot more and turn to God's love. It would make all the difference from where I stand. It would help blow up hatred that we see. And it's easy to see it blow up oppression. Lots of that going around. It helped blow up Satan's lies. We hear lies all the time. And from where I stand, I believe that uh, Satan is alive and well today. He's very active. But there's one thing that he can't combat or come up against and be successful. And that is God's love. Blow up indifference, apathy in our lives. Think about if all those things didn't exist, how much different this world would be. I do have good news, though. Someday that's the way it's going to be. We just don't know when that's going to start. But we're told that we need to be prepared. And love is a key to that. You know, here in this country, we're used to um, donating to many things, disasters, uh, war efforts, conflicts, hunger. I mean, as I watch TV, sometimes I see advertisements that come up, you know, showing the pictures that drive our emotions, asking us to give. And as a country, we are really good at that but it can become something that people call compassion fatigue it's like gosh you know all i do is keep giving or giving or you know how much is enough or that's something that that i'm sure uh it has with me is you have to be careful about that passion, compassion, fatigue that can creep in. I do believe that there is a force out there that wants compassion, fatigue to creep in. But what does it all center back around? That L-O-V-E word, love. In John 13, we find that Christ is uh, on the tail end of his three-year ministry here uh, on the earth. He's celebrating the Passover in the upper room with his disciples, 11 of them. He will call friends. One, he calls the enemy. That's Judas. And so it's kind of a, a uh, exclusive uh, get together. And what we're going to find as you read through John, that 
chapters 13, 14, 15, and 16 happen in that upper room, happen at that table, and happen in that one night. So there's four chapters in John that is devoted to what Jesus is teaching them, in turn, teaching us. Like Nico had told us, uh, he, during that time with his disciples, he was demonstrating love. You know, if, if you're reading through the scripture there, Peter had a hard time with that. Peter always seems to have a hard time with some things, but he had a hard time with that. No, 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 no. Don't wash my feet. You know, you shouldn't be doing that. Jesus says, well, really, and I'm paraphrasing, uh, then you don't need to be here. You don't get it. Jesus tells him, hey, the rest of your body's clean, but what do we walk on? Our feet. And one of the ways to express love is to wash another's feet. It's not something we have to do. It's something we want to do. And there's a lot of things in life. If we have to do it, is it really love? But if we do it because we feel it is the right thing to do and a right, right way to express ourselves in relationship to love, that's what Jesus wants us to do. And that's what he demonstrates to us. He did it throughout his entire ministry. I highly recommend, if you haven't, go through and read the Gospels. Read Paul's accounts. And we, what you'll see is Jesus was continually practicing what he preached. I mean, there's a word, and Belma can tell you. Uh, I used to say kind of frequently in my life, the word hate. And then as I got to know the scriptures better over time, I never heard Jesus say, I hate anything. He was displeased. But there's a difference being displeased. Now, a good example is when he went into the temple and with the money changers and so on. He was displeased with them. It wasn't that he didn't love them. Jesus loves everyone. But he was displeased with the behavior that was transpiring in the temple. So, Judas gets up. I mean, during that, that meal, Jesus uh, confronts evil. And it was in the form of Judas. And we're told that, you know, whoever he dips that bread, he had his hand, he dips it in, whoever he hands it to. And, and then we're told that Satan enters Judas at that point. You know, Judas was a, a thief. Scriptures tell us that. He handled the money for the group. And he borrowed, well, no, I don't think he borrowed from it, but he had a habit of taking from it. So, and he was going to turn Christ in for money in this instance as well. But once Christ did that, he got up and left the room. So what does this mean? When he left the room, Jesus knew what it meant. He knew that Judas was going to set in motion all and everything that would lead Christ to the cross. He knew that. And he didn't fight it. Jesus was telling his disciples that night, basically giving, him, giving them his last will and testimony. And like it was read out of John 
13, verse 33, little children, I shall be with you a little while longer. You will seek me. And as I said to the Jews, where I'm going, you cannot come. So now I say to it, to you. So he's already told the Jews this, and now he's telling them directly. They weren't real keen on him leaving. And then they really weren't keen on him telling them that they couldn't come, which he does tell them later that it won't be now, but they will join him later. But in the meantime, they have work to do. Because Christ won't be with them in human form very soon. He's saying that God in heaven sent his son on a rescue mission. And who did he come and rescue? Who did Jesus come here to rescue? Us. Do, you know, do we need rescuing? Well, he thought so. God thought so. And before God in his plan sent Christ down here to do what he did for us, we had no hope. When it was over, we were convicted. But it comes back to that word love. God loved. And where did all that start? And you've heard me say this before, but it started at the fall. Our original parents, Adam and Eve. Our original parents. Adam and Eve. Why did Christ do this? He did it to grow, glorify his father. And it was God's plan to do this all along. Jesus was in on the plan. So was the Holy Spirit. They knew what had to be so that God's children could be saved. And why else would he do that if he didn't love us? He does love us. But sometimes we as a people in this world forget that. So when something goes wrong in our lives, automatically, well, how could you do that? Why would you let this happen? Don't you love me? Sometimes I think human beings have a misconception of what love is. God knows better what's in our best interest than we know. Of course, as humans, I am convinced we think we know everything better than God. Now, some of us have learned along the way that then that, that mindset was misguided. But there's so many people out there in the world that need God's authentic love in their life. They need it badly. And we need more of it ourselves. We can't get a, we can't get enough he glorified his father by being obedient <laughs> can you imagine being obedient to the to my dad says okay earl you're going to be hanging on that tree over there <laughs> how obedient would i be <laughs> i don't think there are too many I, you know I, I like to stay away from the word never because there's always an exception to the rule, it seems like. But I don't think there's that many human beings where if their father told them to go and get hung on a tree, they would go willingly. But he did, and he did it to glorify his father and to fulfill the plan to atone us from our 
sins. Gosh, he must have really loved us. He must really love us to stay with us. Because as humans, we can be a contrary bunch. We may give up on him, but he never gives up on us. If that's not the definition of true love, I don't know what it is. Because there's a lot of people in my lifetime, on my journey in life, that I wanted to give up on. But I see it a little differently today. As hard as my head is, the good Lord found a way to get in there. And he can get into all of us. But I think he got to me through my heart first. And then it spread. It just took me a while to get there. It's never too late to figure that out. The younger we are and we figure it out, the better off we are. But for those who move through their life and enjoy the ways of the world and, uh, you know, think that's the greatest thing, to me, that's short-sightedness. Because it all will come to an end. The question is, where do we go from there? And without God's love, through his son, Jesus, our Messiah, we're not going to be happy with the answer of where we will be then. And the thing about being human, we don't know when our transition time will come. So really, can we really afford not to be ready at any stage in our life? I say we need to be ready. Because we don't know the answer to those questions. Jesus says the only one who knows the answer to that question is his father. When that time will come, just be ready. We don't want to be one of those handmaidens who didn't prepare their lamps. We want to be those handmaidens, us guys too, in this analogy, that were prepared. And we're in and are invited in. But to get there, word love is very important. I'm briefly going to look at uh, this simple outline. Jesus will tell us what to do. He has told us what to do. How to do it and why we should do it. Well, what to do? Read the scriptures and find out what Jesus says about love in his own words. Yeah, the other disciples tell us, Paul tells us what it is, but Jesus tells us in his own words what love is, and he set the example for us to follow. And he did that for a reason, because has anybody seen God? I haven't. I don't know anybody who's seen God. But where do people see God? Think about that one. Could it be that they see it through God, through us? I believe we make God visible to others by following the commandments that Jesus is giving his disciples. I mean, love, you know, that when I was younger, I thought, well, you know, love, that's a spontaneous thing, it's a human emotion, 
you know, I won't go through all the details behind that. Uh, it flows naturally out of us. You know, I must have been nuts. Because that's not true. That's not true. Anybody who's been brought up in a family knows that is not true. Anybody that's been married over a year knows that that's not true. That love is just a spontaneous thing. It just happens. We never get mad at each other, say things that are unkind. That just doesn't happen, right? No, it happens. Been there, done that. I've asked for forgiveness more times than I can count. But it happens if, you know, for those type of, uh, those type of people. Anybody that's had children knows this. Children can be the biggest challenges in our lives. And it seems like the, the child that is most like us is the ones we have the most difficulty with. Tell me it's not true. It's like looking in a mirror. And nobody wants to look in that mirror, but they'll reflect it right back and then press our emotions and get us to say something that we regret. And then we, from that point on, we as the parent overcompensate because we feel bad that we said that, but we can't take it back. We said it. And I've often been asked, well, where do kids learn that? from the best. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it to your imagination who the best is, but nobody likes looking in that mirror. But it's there. How about if you have a bad neighbor? Huh? How tough is it to love a bad neighbor? Tough. Now, Velma and I, we're blessed. I got so many good neighbors. I had never lived in a neighborhood where I even had what I consider one good neighbor, let alone only whole bunches of good neighbors. Isn't that true? Man, we are blessed. In fact, my neighbor, that our neighbor that lives next door, their washing machine master board went out. Our dryer went out the master board on their dryer. And I thought this was kind of funny because the week prior, our master board went out on our washing machine. So he texts me, he says, hey, you think we can come over and use your dryer? We, we did a load of clothes, but we really needed to get them dry. And Velma and I and Yolanda, we were at the, at the movie saying Harbinger 2, which I would highly recommend personally that you go see Harbinger two, Harbinger one for that matter, but it, it will open your eyes. You know, I, I had to keep picking my mouth up. You know, it's, it's incredible. But I didn't even think twice. I texted him back, says, here's my garage door opener number. The door's unlocked inside. That takes you right into the utility room. Didn't even think twice. Why? Because I have good neighbors. And we, and, but they're not the only ones. A neighbor just down the street, on the other side of the other folks on the other side of me, he's an electrician. And he came over, took out the circuit board and says, oh, and he soldered because he knows what he's doing. And he just did a soldering. And now they're back up and running. Did that neighbor have to do that? No. They're good neighbors. I've never been so blessed living on a circle where I've had so many good neighbors. And I'm still blessed with everyone in the congregation. You at home, you here in the sanctuary. You all are my neighbors, whether you realize it or not. And we're blessed, Velma and I are blessed with having such wonderful neighbors. Neighbors who are willing to be there for you. 
Not because they have to, because they want to. There's a big difference of having to do something than just doing it because it's the right thing and that you share the love that Christ is talking about. The problem with me and notes is I get ahead of myself, but that's okay. So I have to kind of quickly scan and say, oh, been there, done that. You know, uh, Jesus said, you are to love your Lord, your God, with all your heart, soul, and mind. And the second one is like the first. Love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the laws and prophets. If we love like we're told to love, uh, and, and Jesus uses this, this capacity to love as he loved us, right? It takes care of all the other thou shall not, right? I mean, we, we, we're not gonna take God's name in vain. If we love people, we're going, to, we're going to honor our parents. Trust me, parents are smarter than we think they are. It just took me many years to figure that one out. In my case, probably a few decades, but it took me many years to figure that out. And I look back and say, I am so thankful. At the time, I thought I knew it all. Turned out I didn't know it all. If you love people, you won't kill them. Not like what we've been seeing on the news. I mean, for no reason. If you love people, you won't lie. Tell me it's not hard not to lie. It's hard. And then we try to soften it up. We say, well, it's just a little white lie. It's still a lie. And I am from the school of thought that Satan uses those little things to turn them eventually into big things. Be aware. That's not a sandbox you want to play in. Person, that's what I think. Jesus was always talked about truth, right? He must have said that word, I don't know how many times. That's where we need, that's, that's where we need to be, truth. It's not the feedback people have a hard time with. What people have a hard time with is how we give the feedback. Well, I don't know about y'all, but when I was growing up in high school, nobody ever taught me how to do that stuff in school. I didn't get that stuff until, they don't, they don't even do that for you in college unless your field is in that direction. But how we give feedback is what's harmful. It's not the feedback itself. We need to hear things. But how are we communicating them to others is important, just like Christ. He set that example too. Jesus called this a new commandment. Love one another as I love you. But it's not new. In Leviticus 19.18, it states, do, this is Moses, God speaking through Moses, says, do not seek revenge or 
bear a grudge against anyone among your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. So this isn't new, but Christ calls it new. In this regard and way Christ is using it, he wants to revive it. And he's, he's got the 11 disciples, right? One has gone away to start other things in motion. But he's got the 11 disciples and he says, look, it's got to start somewhere. So let's just start here. Let's start here. And if we start here, how people will see how you treat one another, how you love one another. And through that, they will learn. You will make God visible because they were important we are important they were important because they started the movement to where we are today we are important because our task is to continue the movement today and unless people can see Sacrificial love, unconditional love, for never ending love in our life, in our lives. How are we going to do that? People say, uh, I've heard this said, well, that's impossible. There's a way I can do that. Christ did it because he's who? He's Jesus, you know, he's the son of God. Of course he can do it. Well, here's my answer to that question. You're right. If you tried to do it on your own. If you tried to do it on your own, the answer to that question is you're right. It is impossible. But the good news is we are not alone. Everyone sitting here, all you all sitting out there on Zoom at home. The last time I checked, we're all in Christ. Christ is with us. Every sleeping and waking moment in our life. So where do we need to keep our focus? On him. But in today's world, what do humans tend to keep their focus on? <laughs> Self-centeredness, self-focus. I don't need anybody else. They are so wrong. We need Christ in our life. You know, a lot of people say, how do you measure love? Well, there's a lot of ways, uh, you know, send flowers to your wife on anniversary. I love you, dear, you know. Chocolates, and she'll say, oh, don't get me chocolates. I don't like chocolates. You know, those kind of things we express in the word. And it's no secret. I have no problem. And people have heard it. All of you have heard it. I love you all. And she must hear it a million times more than y'all do. But I don't say what I don't mean. I do. That's what Christ calls us to do. It just took me a long time to figure that out. But it's never too late to get there. At nighttime, when I say my prayers, I'm always tell you know, when I'm praying to God, I say, you know, thank you for never giving up on me. I would have gave up on me a long time ago, but he never did. He just kept 
putting one learning opportunity in front of me and another one and another one. And, but he never gave up on me. And then one day the light bulb came up. In Romans 5.5, 5, Paul tells us, and hope does not put us to shame because God love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. You see, a lot of times people say, well, I only got so much love to give. Wrong, that's, that's a wrong answer. Paul tells us that God fills our hearts with love. And if he keeps filling up the tank, right? It's just like filling up a car. If you keep filling up your car, you'll be able to keep driving it, right? Well, he keeps filling through the Holy Spirit our tank with love. So does it matter if we uh, share that love with each other? Because guess what? The tank is still full. We're not going to run out of love. And this is what Jesus was teaching his disciples up till the last moment. A good example of that is uh, when Jesus was on the cross. They nailed him on the cross. People are shouting at him. They're spitting on him. You know, I can't imagine. They're, they're playing the, to try to divide up his, his clothing, you know, playing games down there. If I had been in Christ's shoes at that moment, I'd say, God, get him. Is that what he said? No, he said, forgive them. For they know not what they do. Is that not love? That is absolutely the most unconditional love one can possibly imagine. Even to the end of his human life on the cross, he forgave them because he loved them. That was a teaching moment right up to the end of his earthly life. Of course, we all know that what he did after that and arose was very important to us. But we as Gentiles, we were called to keep the gospel spreading. That's what our mission is. He called us to do that. And many of God's chosen people are doing that. I listen to a lot of rabbis. And they're messianic rabbis. And it's incredible. Because they have such a knowledge about the Old Testament. And the New Testament. And really have a way of. Melding it all together. But God loves us. He wants us to continue to do what we're doing and to share the love that he's given us a reservoir in our hearts of so that we can answer that initial question. Can we do it? I profess that we can do it. Is it easy? Nope. You will find nowhere in the scripture where it says it's easy leading a Christian godly life. It is not easy. And Jesus drew attention to us that follow him. And that even makes it less easy. But we need to keep being prepared and love one another as Jesus loves us.
<clears throat> From Messiah, we read, do not suffer your children that they go hungry or naked, but teach them to walk in the ways of truth and soberness. Teach them to love one another and to serve one another. During the disciples' generous response, we focus on aligning our heart with God's heart. Our offerings are more than simply meeting budgets or funding mission. And through our offerings, we are able to tangibly express our gratitude to God, who is the giver of all. As we share our mission tithes, either by placing money in the plate in the foyer on your way out, or through e-tithing, use this time to thank God for the many gifts received in your life. Our hearts grow aligned with God's when we gratefully receive and faithfully respond by living Christ's mission. Would you pray with me now? Lord, it's our desire to love as you love us. May we open our eyes and become aware of those around us and their needs and their concerns and then perhaps we can truly be your servant who tries to address their issues. As a servant to our fellow man, may we wisely use all of our resources, monetary, physical, emotional, and spiritual for their greater good. Thank you, God, for our many blessings. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Now let's all stand as we sing our closing hymn. We are one in the spirit led by the Cole Choir. It's number 359. Let us pray together, please. 
Heavenly Parent, we are truly one in your spirit. We have been together during this hour to continue our growth into the, the disciples that you want us to be and to love each other just as you have loved each of us, proving to the world that you, Lord God, are in each of us. Keep us safe and secure till we meet again. In your son's most holy name, amen. I send you forth with the answer to the question that we started out the day with. Can we do it? Yes, we can do it. Oh, I forgot to say, uh, thank you everyone for helping with the service and the tech team and Carol with the, uh, Kathleen with the music. And please unmute yourselves and participate in fellowship. Sorry about that. I did have that in my notes. <laughs> have a great week, everyone. Thank you, Elaine and Shannon family. <laughs> I was going to talk to the Shannons, but they just left. Hey, Cindy and Roger, how are you all? Hi, Patty. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Oh, Hi, everybody know. online. Hey, Richard. Hello. Hey, Earl. Hi. Hi, y'all. Jim. Those were good stats from the uh, walkathon. They were good, weren't they? Yeah, sure was. To raise, that, to raise that much money with the same number of walkers, that was great. Yeah, um, absolutely. And and I'm just glad that in the heat that everybody got through it well. So uh, we started a little bit early, which helped, but yep. uh, it was a it was a really good day. Good, good, good. Wish I could have been there. <laughs> uh -huh. Are you in Pennsylvania, Patty? Yes, ma'am. Okay. We are. Yep. How yep. is the weather out there? Uh, well, it's the, all week. It's been sunny and bright and in the high 70s. So we've been having wonderful weather. Oh, yeah. That's great. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yep. Yeah. We've been in the night, like 94 high. <laughs> yeah. I know. I've been watching yeah. it. Yeah. Been watching it and saw how hot it is. So yeah, I'm a, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure, for sure. Hey, Patty, we have the two o'clock today. Yes, sir, we do. Uh, I will be there. <laughs> okay, good. All right. Well, all right, thanks, thanks you all for today. everything. Yeah. Oh, you, bye. You too. Take care. All right. Love you all. Love you too. Bye bye. Bye, guys.